What your life can truly be Shining star for you to see What your life can truly be You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, God damn it! Get the point. Good. And now... Bend Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Hey there, hi there, ho there, and woohoo! It is Wednesday. Yeehaw, and yippee i and all that fun stuff. <laughs> Y'all are listening to Grammy's Rocketeer here on RealLibertyMedia.com, Channel 10. Also on the RLM Spreaker Channel, the RLM TuneIn Radio Station, the RLM Internet Radio Station, the RLM Radio.xyz site, and later lots of other places. And I'm thinking, holy moly, I've invaded the cybernetic airwaves. <laughs> I'm a shining star. Yeah, so are you, actually. Each and every one of you is a little candle out there. And and if the wind blows you out, that's okay. Because, you know, I had beans last night, so I can light you back up again. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. It's going to be a weird night. It's going to be a weird night. I had all kind of... I was out working in the garden most of the day. And uh, I do have... Some white squash that survived. I have some summer squash that survived. I have some uh, acorn squash and some butternut squash. And my cantaloupe survived. And my potatoes survived. I think I think if, if what's sprouting up right now, it's a little late, but it's sprouting up now. I do maybe possibly have a cucumber going out there. I know you wanted to have the rundown of my garden, didn't you? My tomato plants are looking pretty sad pretty sad but you know that's that's this weird weather we've been having this year and uh, went out to eat with the farmer the other day and overheard several people around in the restaurant saying how they're not going to have cucumbers this year either whether they got rained out or got hailed out or got heat out you know because i mean you get inundated with all of this stuff and the w- temperatures are cool and then all of a sudden the blast furnace hits that's not pleasant on those poor young plants so out here gardens are not doing so well just so you know grammy mary quite contrary how does your garden grow well i have a few things that survived <laughs> i will be able to survive myself but and I'm excited that I have so much squash that's, you know, now let's just see if it actually does set anything on and I actually get some squash out of the deal. I will be tickled. Did you know, by the way, this is my did you know night. Did you know that in canned pumpkin, there is really not that much pumpkin in there. There's more acorn squash. And sometimes butternut, I, now is it acorn or butternut? I don't remember now. But one of those squashes, there's there's actually more of that than there is pumpkin in there. And uh, my my eldest daughter, who it makes the most amazing pumpkin pies in the world, um, she found that out because her pumpkin pie mix never did taste like the canned stuff. And so she did some researching on it, and it's like, oh, oh. So what she started doing was, you know, she was growing pumpkins and she was growing acorn and butternut squash and she was doing half and half until it got to where it tasted remotely close and yet better. (laughs) Just a little did you know kind of thing. I'll have more of those here in just a little bit. First, I got to say hey to everybody out there in cybernetic redidio land. I got to refresh my Twitter because oh, some bitch. Uh, That picture that was there, it was a a matador that got gored through the chin and came out, ow, it it made my stomach clench just seeing that picture. Oh well, over here on Twitter, thank you Vinny and thank you 
uh, Grimmy slash Barman slash RLM for letting everybody know over here on Twitter that I am live and in poison. Let's go over here to realliberty.org. I see Bobby Bain is over here. Hey, Bobby, how you doing, sweetheart? I also see Grimmy and Bob Renner are here. And once again, thank you, Grim, for letting everyone over here know that I am live and in poison. On the Freedoms Network site, the sister site to realliberty.org, or realliberty.org is the sister site, or maybe, maybe it's the brother site. I don't know. I don't see. There's another. Did you know? <laughs> Over here on Effin's site, I see that Estrella was here for a while, as well as Cowboy Tech, Chris of the Family Masters, and Grimmy, who let everybody over here know that I was coming up live and in person. Actually, he's letting them know in this in the shout box that I'm live and in poison. Thank you, Grim. You're so awesome, sauce. Over here on Mines, I saw that Grim, once again, Barman, RLM, let everybody know that I'm live over here on Mines. And did you know, dear government officials, please fix the roads you taxed me to build so I won't damage my car that you taxed me to drive to get home, which you annually tax, and of course, all paid for with income you also tax. That was posted by Anonymous over here on uh, Mines. I know, rascal, your claw got hooked. And thank goodness it got hooked in the, yeah, because that would have hurt if you hooked anywhere else. My key cat's on my lap again. I know. Shock, shock. I also see that uh, Cowboy Tech is over here. Hey, Cowboy Tech. Thank you, hon, for reminding that. And let's see. So there's that one, that one, that one, that one. Fake book. Fake book. Hello, everybody over here on Facebook. You know, I really don't tell anybody on Facebook anymore. But I do come back to Facebook once in a while because, you know, I find a meme that is really cool. And in the Mark Passio means, I shared this one earlier, and I thought I would share it with you as well. Secrecy is the keystone to all tyranny. Not force, but secrecy and censorship. When any government or church, for that matter, undertakes to say to its subjects, this you may not read, this you must not know, the end result is tyranny and oppression, no matter how holy the motives. Although the holy there is spelled H-O-L-Y, but I'm going to stick an E in there and make it holy as in full of holes as in more than Swiss cheese. Now, mighty little force is needed to control a man who's been hoodwinked in this fashion. Contrarywise, no amount of force can control a free man whose mind is free. No, not the rack, nor the atomic bomb, not anything. You can't conquer a free man. The most you can do is kill him. That was Robert A. Heinlein. Over here on Facebook. Hi, Lady Lisa B. I see you over. Oh, and Monica. Hi, sweetie. And give give that little man a hug. My one of my great nephews fell, and and uh, as his daddy would say, chicks dig scars. He got one. He he face planted, and got his chin glued together. Bless his heart. He's like two and a half, something like that. In any case, moving along, over here to the one place where you need to be if you want to give me static. If you are listening in on the Spreaker channel, please come over to reallibertymedia.com. Think of a nickname, join the chat, give me some static, and I'll give it back. Because you know what? I can't do the whole chit-chat on Spreaker and chit-chat in here as well. Not the greatest interwebs out here. Just saying. So, over here in the RLM, I see right up top Mr. Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world, closely followed by Beetle. Hi, Beetle. How you doing? Is Pippi on your lap? I got I got Rascal on my lap. I also see Cowboy Tech, who is hearing sweet voices. Bless your heart, hon. Don't ever get your hearing checked. And looky there, we got some Grimner, the RLM god, don't you know? As well as the lovely Moose Coil. Hey, Moose. How you doing? Um, steamy thing, huh? Okay. Moving along. 
uh, Backward Bracket DC is here. Hi, DC. Say hi to your Mary for me, please. I also see Anti is here, as well as Asmodeus Asmo, the lovely Beth Z. And looky there, Free Enslaved. Hi, Free. How you doing, sweetie? I also see I'm here, kind of, sort of, maybe, as well as I be Don C. Java, 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 Java Doctor 2 and Meister Bra. Hi, Meister Bra. You know, Bra. I'm getting to that later as well because, you know, did you know? Did you know? And looky there, the lovely Miss Kate in Florida who's dealing with deluges. Monsoon season has come to Florida. Yeah, I know how that is, sweetheart. <laughs> oh, Pippi's eating? Okay, that works for me. Uh, dun dun dun, where am I at? Vanna White. Hi, Miss Vanna White, the lovely letter turner bot of the channel. And Weather Dork, who lets us know if we give him the sign, you know, you got to give him the little sign to say, I want to know what the weather's doing. Although, I know what the weather's doing out here. And really, the wind has gone down now. Now. <laughs> and I'll bet it's not nearly as warm as it was earlier when I was playing in the garden pulling weeds and all that kind of fun stuff. Ah, bindweed. I swear, if I were to trace those roots all the way down, they probably, I'd come out in China, I think. I really do. Moving along. Woodman. Hi, Woody. How you doing, sweetheart? And Phantom, the wonderful young man that did my intro for me. Cycles is logged in. Hey, Cycles. How you doing, sweetie? I also see Cyborg Noodle. May you be touched by his Cyborgian noodliness. We got some Frumped going on in the chat, as well as from B. I also see Gooberzilla here. Hey, Goob. How you doing, hon? Got some Gromit in the chat as well and JJ's no 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 JJ's is also here. Um oh Miss Donna Van Meter is enjoying the Florida weather. I'm glad you are, sweetheart. I really am. It's it's a big state, so it may not be monsoon and where you're at. Um da -da, where am I at? Grandma JJ's kiss got a double kiss going on. Ooh both cheeks. <laughs> Also got a ponder gander here. Hey, Vanny, is that Charlton Eco? I know that's the one that questions everything. I also see pom 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 pom, -pom sauce as Raufka. Raufka? How fun. That's a fun one. Sock Puppet. Hey, Sock. How you doing? We also got Smataz. Smataz is the Smataz box of the channel and not necessarily the sharpest crayon in the box i'm just saying i also see the lovely miss van meter hey donna how you doing um grimmy says it's hotter than a mofo that's how it's doing <laughs> i don't doubt that it's it's not that hot it's below 90 out here so that's that's not that bad so I, I will deal with that. It gets it gets above 90, and I start getting a little on the wilty side. And it gets above 95, and I most definitely start wilting. It really does. Okay, ooh, 80 degrees and humid. I can't do the humidity. Ooh, 81% humidity. No, I can't do that, sweetheart. Just can't do it, Donna. <clears throat> Man, I've, I had... It wasn't a heat stroke. It was heat exhaustion. That's pretty much what it was explained to me as. Where just, and this was way back when my eldest daughter was um, the summer before she graduated high school. And it was freaking hot and humid. And I was working outside all day long, working on project graduation stuff because we made a flusher for the uh, fair. And if you're wondering what a flusher is, we, you know, we would have had to have gotten insurance, you know, in case somebody got hurt with doing a dunking tank. So we decided to do a flusher where we took a toilet and we put the toilet seat down on the bottom. And then we built a framework and put the tank up top. And then if you hit the paddle, it flushed the tank and it came down on whomever was sitting on the seat. And one of our enterprising young soon-to-be seniors uh, put little mini Tootsie Rolls in the tank. So it really was quite fun. <laughs> And that was that was um, an idea that 
my ex and I came up with and, and we built that thing and it really it was a hit quite literally that was one of the few booths that really 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 was constantly busy constantly busy I think they used it for four years until uh, the framework because you have to take everything down and then put it back together again and after the fourth year it was a little getting on the weebly wobbly side and nobody wanted to build it rebuild it so they just didn't do it again but it was it was pretty funny <laughs> <laughs> we even had some kids that would sit there, you know, and they'd have like their pants around their ankles and they had a newspaper on their lap and made it look like um, they were using the toilet. <laughs> fun, fun time. Really was. Oh, well. And you know what? To round out the crew, I got off on squirrel. <laughs> hey, Graham, I finally said it. Squirrel. I had a squirrel moment there, but hey, Vinny, he's the one rounding out the crew. Hey, hon, how you doing? Okay, so it is a wackadoodle Wednesday, a woohoo Wednesday, and um, <laughs> apparently a Missouri man celebrates a pothole's third birthday. <laughs> Put a piece of cake with a number three cal uh, candle inside of it. So where do I want to go first? I have two did you knows. Two did you knows for this evening? I think I will do. I think I will do. Which one will I do? Um, do I want to do that one? No. Let's see. Was here we go. We'll go with this one. This is from IFL Science. I freaking love. I know that's not what they're saying, but I freaking love science, which I do. I think I find it fascinating. Um, I don't care for scientism. But I find science fascinating. And the article is, all right, ladies and men, why you shouldn't wear a bra according to science. Did you know? You, okay, I'm, this is a TMI moment for all y'all. I haven't worn a quote unquote bra. Now I do have camis and I, I do have like sports bras, but they're not the same thing. Um, but... I haven't worn a, a real, like, especially not an underwear bra in probably six or seven years. I just finally said to hell with it. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm not doing it. And I actually told, and then when I researched it, I told both of my daughters about it. And my youngest daughter said, but mom, that's the only way I have any tatas. Because, <laughs> <laughs> and my eldest daughter said, but mom, they're unruly. And I said, I know. But they make camis that will tend to that business. And they are not near as, nearly as harmful. But back to this. This is get prepared, mark your calendars, all this other fun stuff. You know, today is National Kitten Day. Whatever. Really? Like who gives two rats patooties? But apparently everybody on Twitter, because that's where I learned of it. But um, <clears throat> in any case, I know, squirrel. I'm squirreling today. October 13th is National No Bra Day, and it was invented to promote breast cancer awareness and to help raise money for research. Now, I could give two rats asses about the research part because we all know better. We all know better. It's all a money thing for that. You know, sure, raise some money for them to research what they've known for years. Yeah, and what it's too lucrative to repair or correct so yeah keep giving them keep sending your dollars there you go but yeah to raise awareness at least now bras are a divisive symbol some consider them a ludicrous invention and others as a tool of emancipation Scientifically speaking, the most notorious research on bras and breasts came out a couple years ago. Now, this was printed the um, October the 13th or posted October the 13th of 2015, so it's a few years old. Back to this. Uh, sports science researcher Jean-Denis Roulon. Yeah, you try and say that three times fast. That, that, that. Okay, this is a professor based in the University of France, or French Comet, in the eastern town of Besacon. 
I'm sure I butchered that. He led a team that conducted a 15-year study on the effect of bras on 330 women ages 18 to 35. Now, the study conducted um, at the university hospital, and the team used a slide rule and caliper to record the changes to the women's breasts year in and year out. I wonder how they... Wow, they're scientists, remember? It's all in the name of science. <laughs> I know all you guys out there that are going, I volunteer to be a breast inspector, but this is in the name of science, okay? Now, the findings suggest that wearing a bra from an early age did nothing to help support the chest or reduce back pain or prevent breast sagging. Medically, physiologically, anatomically, breasts gain no benefit from being denied gravity. On the contrary, they get saggier with a bra. That's according to Professor Roulon. Now, <clears throat> the researchers believe that young women would gain more tone and supporting breast tissue if no bra was used. And in the study, women that stopped wearing bras through choice, not as a requirement of the study, <clears throat> excuse me, had a 7 millimeter or 0.3 inch lift in their nipples when compared to regular bra users. Now, bras, they claim, could hamper circulation and reduce breast tone over time, especially the underwire. Underwires are, those are demonic. I mean, if, you, if you've worn an underwire bra, uh, oh, some bitch, those things, those things hoit. They really do. In any case, back to this. Um, da -dun -da -dun. So, for younger women, not wearing a bra will lead to increased collagen production and elasticity, which improves lift in a developing breast. That's according to Dr. Stanford Bromond, who was not connected with the study. And of course, many women wear bras for other reasons than to just reduce the sag of their breasts, you know, and that's why Victoria's Secrets is still in business. Nobody looks like a Victoria's Secrets model. Seriously, those, the, those women are, yeah, bless their hearts, but oh my goodness, yeah, it's like, mmm. Nobody really looks like that, especially when you remove all the makeup. No, nobody really looks like that. Okay, so back to this. Now, the team advises caution on drawing general conclusions from this research as the women in the study are not representative of the population as a whole. And Professor Roulon uh, believes more research is necessary to understand the potential impacts. In other words, we must investigate the boobs a little bit longer, okay? Now, positive or negative, you know, they want to know what the impacts are on that bras may have. And they admit that these are very preliminary results, so there's going to need to be a lot more research into the girls. Moreover, although the findings were scheduled to be published, I freaking love science was unable to find the paper on the literature. So... I've, I, yeah, I agree with you, cowboy. Um, well, good for you, Vinny. Vinny has never worn a bra. I am so proud of you, hon. Wow. Okay. I don't know if camouflage bras look just like, I think they look like camo, which is like, that's not hiding them very well. <laughs> um, and I, yeah, I have some sports bras that I wear and I mostly have camis that I wear. But it's not necessary. It's definitely not a support kind of thing or anything like. And definitely no freaking underwires. Those things are just evil, evil. And speaking of evil, I have one other thing I wanted to get to. And this is something. Um, <laughs> there you go, Donna. 
<laughs> Anarch tits. Okay. The boobs are free. Let the girls free. Let them roam. Or, you know, as some people call them sweater puppies. <clears throat> but I digress. Now, I'm hoping, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, no, it's a different article, not that one. This one, yeah. I'd, while I was out pulling weeds, and normally when I'm pulling weeds, you know, the weeds all get a name. And it's usually someone that's really irritated me. But I haven't had anybody really irritate me in quite some time. Now, there's some people that I just plain never stop shaking my head, which kind of sort of gets me a little on the lightheaded side. Cobwebs get to moving and they start sparking all over the place. And next thing you know, I I got a tilt flashing on my forehead. But <clears throat> so I was I was pondering other things. And one of the things that I pondered, yes, Vinny, I'm, I'm swiping part of your name. Uh, was that we live in a world of ease. And I'm not talking the word E-A-S-E. -E. I'm talking the letter E. Yes, this is, you could almost say this is a Sesame Street kind of thing. <laughs> I am not channeling Big Bird or anything like that. But, but, did you know that the most commonly used letter in the English language, not, not the whole world, but in the English language, is the letter E. Now, this is the case in general language, in fiction and nonfiction writings, in journalism, religious works like the Bible, and even in Morse code. The most common consonant in the English language is T. Now, with E being so common in the English language, one would think that uh, it would start the most words. But actually, T begins the most words, followed by O. Now, E is a letter which most commonly occurs third in a word and is the third most common second letter in a word. The most common second letter in a word in English is H. Did you know that? I did not. I, I kind of guessed that E was the most commonly used letter just just from some of the ranting and rambling that was going on in my head, but um, it goes on to say that actually E is far down the list of English word beginners and it comes in 15th place. The five most common letters beginning words are T, O, A, W, and B. Now, approximately half of the words in the English language end with the letters E, T, D, and S, with the greatest share of the words ending in E. Further, there are four letters most likely to follow E in a word, and these are R, S, N, and D. Did you know that? I did not. Ironically, of the most common words with two letters in the English language, only three words actually have an E. They are B, we, and me. Only three words actually... No, you forgot he. Shame on you. N now, as well... Oh, and it says as well in the top 20 most frequently written English words, only three words have an E. And these are the or the, uh, which is the most frequently used word in the English language, unless you're listening to Dangleberry, and then it's a, uh, ooh, uh, mm, uh, mm, uh, 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 and he and be. What happened to she? Because she doesn't, she doesn't advertise as much. You know, it's kind of like everybody says, ah, bullshite. Well, cows do too, but they don't advertise as much or they don't brag as much. However you want to look at that. However, when one analyzes the most frequently used three-letter words, E gets the fairer share again. So, when teaching children spelling, it can be fun to play a game with them where one says only words that do not contain an E. And that would be difficult, I'm thinking. And it's pretty difficult to get through more than a few sentences without a slip. The E is fairly indispensable. For example, this article contains 193 of them. 
I've also used the most common diphthong, TH, 63 times, and the most common consonant, T, 151 times. I found this interesting. And, by the way, there are also some really interesting links on either side of it as well. So, and cycle, you can't spell cycle without an E. You just plain can't. I don't think it is, Vanny. I don't think that's the most used word. It may be really close. <laughs> but I don't think I don't think that's the most commonly used word. But I got that gave me a little and while, you know, weeding and stuff, mental exercises were going on. So I got to thinking, okay, if we live in a world of ease, and it can be a world of ease as an E A S E if you have the proper mindset. It really can. But some of the other words that I thought of that start with the letter E, here we go with Sesame Street again, is educate or entertain or embarrass or enjoy, emulate, exercise, emphasize, elevate, equate, endeavor, error. Did you know, did you know that even in this world, if, if, there were a reset to happen and they would say it would erase this error that's going on right now. Um, I'm afraid to tell you that no, it would not because once something has occurred, it cannot unoccur. You might learn from it. You might want to try and forget it, you know, like some history or some of the dumb shit that you did back when you were younger. Thank God all the dumb shit that I did back when I was younger was before we had cell phones. <laughs> and so therefore, any kind of photographic evidence was more than likely on a Polaroid, which meant no film, and I could burn that. <laughs> I'm destroying history and evidence of my shenanigans. Okay, there probably aren't that many out there because I was usually the one operating the camera. But back to the E words. Did you also know that you got an E can be both ends of the spectrum. It can be eternal and it can be the end. Did you also know it's evil and equal and it's engaging and enraging. It can even emasculate someone. Hmm. E is a very versatile letter, don't you know? I found it quite fascinating. Just reading that little bit, I know I am, here you go, Vinny, easily entertained. <laughs> you have a good dinner, Vinny. Have an awesome evening. Now, I'm going to head off to the pig before I get to my last little bit that ran through my mind whilst I was um, playing in the yard. MAGA Musings. Ah, the top story over here on PIGazette.com is MAGA Musings. I wonder what those two boys are up to now. Word of the day over here on the pig is fine. Fine. Now, there's a warning with this one. This is the second definition, according to the pig. It's an encrypted female response which terminates a heated exchange of views. It decodes as, even if they find his body, no jury in the world will convict me. Fine. Fine. You know, fine and nothing. Those are probably the two most dangerous words to ever come out of a woman's mouth, especially after you've asked them a question. Like, how are you doing or what's wrong? If you get either one of those words as a response, run away. Seriously, run away until she cools down. Okay? In the quotable quotes section, if you look at Washington, you see permanently camped on the banks of the Potomac, spread around the concentric circles, an army representing thousands of selfish interests. The sole purpose of their presence is to plunder, by hook or by crook, 
the public treasury for the benefit of their particular people or corporations. That was from Charlie Reese. You know what, Charlie? That's probably, yeah. In their Tasty Tidbits section, Random Thoughts for July by Robert Hall. Hmm. Do you know there's a difference between tenacity and being a damn fool? The trick is to know where the line is. Hmm. People who always live in the day have miserable tomorrows. No, sweetheart, they don't have miserable tomorrows because tomorrow never comes. So if I tell you, okay, I'll get on that tomorrow. If I don't give you a specific day or even a Pacific day, because there are some people that say that too. Um, if I tell you I'll get out, I'll get on that tomorrow. <laughs> you better ask me again tomorrow. Because I may have forgotten about it. Just saying. Did you know that a progressive will all, is always willing to make the poor suffer a lot if he can make the rich suffer a little as part of the deal? He calls it fairness. Hmm. Hmm. I call it short-sightedness. That's what I call it. Socialism is the morality of the hive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, I'm making a hive noise here. I never heard any other reason for the quarrel than slavery. That's from Gen uh, Confederate General James Longstreet speaking of the Civil War. Now, <clears throat> I do want to say I saw something over on Twitter earlier today and I went, Oh, uh, really? Apparently... Camilla's father said that her ancestors were slave owners. Oops. Camilla, hon, you can cough up some funds for those reparations that you're demanding everybody else pay? Hmm? Just curious. Hmm, did you know that a progressive plan to deal with overwhelming flood of illegal immigrants is to use taxes, regulations, and socialism to turn America into a third, word, third world hellhole where no one will want to come? Too late. We just haven't figured it out yet. Just saying. A quote from a vet at the VA is, uh, My old man said, if you blister your ass... You're the one who has to sit on it. Hmm. Cool. So, when we're planning for prosperity or posterity, we ought to remember that virtue is not hereditary. That's from Thomas Paine. Hmm. 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 There's lots more there. If you want to read some more, come on over to pigazette.com and uh, see what Hambo and Porcus have got going. This date in history, wow, they didn't go too far back in his story. On the 10th of July, 1997, a stunning new boxing ploy, Biting Holyfield's Ear, gets Michael Tyson banned from boxing, and Jesse Jackson mutters, when you bite, you lose. Ah, and also this date in history, the 10th of July, 2002, MLB reaches new low when All-Star Game ends in 11th inning tie after both sides run out of pitchers. Disturbing noises emanate from Abner Doubleday's grave. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, they got some, oh, they go on about American greatness in their, their top story. I don't know that I really feel up to that this evening. Not really. Uh, you know, Grim, they might have been, but I'll bet you that uh, they probably, probably were not paid. And they were probably whipped. <laughs> and they were kept in not such pleasant living conditions. Her ancestors, that is. <clears throat> in any case, moving along. Moving along. I have one more that I want to get to this evening. And uh, this is one of those things, and I'm trying to, I'm going to go ahead and share this, and would you all please be so kind as to let me know if you can actually see, uh, I guess maybe, 
Miss Vanna will let me know. Sweet, it does work. Okay. So, I was I was scrolling and trolling in my pocket and cleaning a bunch of stuff out and I thought, oh, let's just check out the Explore tab because it's a new pocket. And so, I stumbled across this and I thought, ah, this looks interesting. So, this ancient habit will maximize your focus. Apparently, our thoughts are often so cluttered by worry and fear that we lose focus. So having a mantra can help you get it back. This is from Darius Faro. So, ever since I was little, I worried about many things. My favorite topics were money, health, and my future. So, I don't tell, or, and don't tell me you never worry or fear nothing because if you have zero fear then that means you're a robot. He apparently wants to know what's your favorite topic to worry about which I don't worry anymore. I really don't. I don't worry. I don't stress. I don't stress. I don't fume. I ponder. I sometimes get irritated but I don't worry. Not anymore. Used to but don't anymore. In any case everyone spends time thinking about things that will never happen. Because that's what fear is. Michel de Montaigne, I know, I, or Montaigne, the uh, 16th century philosopher said it best. My life has been full of terrible misfortunes, most of which never happened. So we all know that fear is meant to save us from trouble. But in the modern world, that's simply not true anymore. I don't know, I don't know, Darius. I, I, I don't know about that. There's things, there's shit out there that's like spiders <laughs> and snakes. I don't like spiders and snakes. Thank you very much, Jim Stafford. But back to this. These days, fear is only something that occupies our mind. No, honey, you have not ever been out in my garden when I have a creepy crawly on me and it's like, some bitch! Because I freak. I do. I admit it. Now, our thoughts are so cluttered with fear, worry, and stress that we can't focus on our goals. And in my personal experience, living a full life has nothing to do with the resources or opportunities you have, which I do have to agree with that. I do have to agree with that. It's about knowing what you want and also knowing how you can get it. And that's why you need to be focused every day. Without work, no goal will ever be achieved. So sometimes you have to, and I don't know that I would say work, but sometimes it takes some effort. Effort. Another E word. <laughs> that's why he wants to share this ancient habit that stood the test of time. It's the power of having a mantra. He goes on to say he's not a spiritual person, but he believes in uh, coincidence and luck, which I don't believe in coincidence. I believe in synchronicities. I do not believe in, in coincidence, though. I also don't believe in some kind of spiritual energy that we can't see. Oh, well, see, this is where Darius, you and I part ways in the I be live thing. Because I think there is an energy that we cannot see with our five senses. We have difficulty <clears throat> perceiving it. Let's put it that way. Apparently, Darius is a pretty skeptical person. But he's also pr a pragmatist and believes in what works and that's why he never challenges religion or spirituality because it works for millions of people and seriously you know everybody goes oh well you know spirit cooking and and uh, praying to a god that looks like an owl or satanism or all of these other bad juju things that are in jeffrey epstein you know <laughs> those kind of things they're they're Oh, that's all just a bunch of stuff and nonsense. It may be a bunch of stuff and nonsense to you, but those that are participating in it actually believe it. They believe it. And that's where the danger comes in. Because what you believe is what you act on. My thoughts. So... In fact, he did study religion and cultures and different beliefs that people have. And one thing that he's learned from religion is how useful a mantra is. Now, most of us have heard about it, but few of us have one or let alone actively practice one. So, um, here is a definition that he found online for a mantra. A mantra is a sacred utterance, an 
a numinous sound, a numinous sound, okay, a syllable, word, or uh, phonemes, okay, or group of words in Sanskrit believed by practitioners to have psychological and spiritual powers. Okay. I don't know what some of them words mean, but okay. <laughs> I have to look them up later. Mantras exist in some shape or form for centuries. Sen I, I would say, me personally, I would say much longer than, I would say eons. Now you can find them in Hinduism, Buddhism, Taoism, Christianity, and he's learned that people from all over the world use a mantra to overcome fear and improve their focus. And you know what? In Christianity, I bet you a lot of them are saying the Hail Mary or the Our Father or Oh, please, baby Jesus, thank you, baby Jesus. You know that kind of stuff. Although they did not have a J in their uh, alphabet back then, just you know if you go with although i'm i'm of a mind that i'm thinking there was some monks that had some very fertile imaginations <laughs> that wrote a lot of the crap that we call his story these days but i digress <clears throat> so apparently his favorite example of someone who applies a mantra is floyd mayweather the boxer Mayweather may be a controversial figure that people either love or hate, but he's also considered as the best boxer of all time. Not one of the best, but the best. He has a record of 50 and 0, and he never even came close to losing. Hmm. Apparently his recipe for success, well, a lot of talent, that's for sure, but the man also has a crazy work ethic, and he's been training ever since he was a baby. Now, this author has followed him for years, and he really doesn't care about his cars or money. He watched his training videos to see whether or not he could learn something that he could apply to his own life. Now, a person that uh, with those kinds of results must do things right, you know, you, which, yeah, you know, if you keep winning and winning and winning, I'm still thinking any given Sunday, but, ah. Eh. Now, a few years ago, he noticed something that seemed like a prom um, promotion technique at first. Mayweather often repeated the same phrase, hard work, dedication. Now, it same, sounds like a lame company slogan, and he says that while he works on the heavy bag or the speed ball or the pads, and even while he's running, constantly he repeats the same words sometimes in a different order. And it wasn't until he learned about Mayweather's mantra that he started using his own. And he always thought that it was something that yoga hipsters used to become Zen. You know, like, no, I can't see Darius. I can't see you sitting on the floor cross-legged and going, um. So, apparently, um is his oh no let's go is his mantra he's trained himself to say it every morning when he wakes up and it really energizes him so when he wakes up he immediately says let's go and he's experimented with different mantras in particular ones that you repeat more often but he's found that it's not his thing he's pretty direct and a no BS person and he prefers something short and powerful not only does he say it when he wakes up but he also says it before starting to work or when he wants to start his workout let's go so give it a try. It works really well for him and because it change, changes his state of mind to action and especially when he feels afraid or powerless in life. He tries to force a change in state, which, yeah, mine is bless your heart or I am thankful for the lessons. That's usually what, you know, and, and every morning it's like, I am so grateful I woke up. That's, that's pretty much, the rest of the day is like bonus round. Because I woke up. Bonus! So, um, 
the only now you know the platitude the only way out is through and he believes that that is true and if you want to get through things you need action so after you start using your mantra you get in a worry-free zone and this is one of the most effective things that he has found in his personal growth he highly recommends a mantra for everyone, but I think you really need to pick your own mantra. Don't be going with, you know, somebody else says, you must say, um, or you must say this, or you must say that, because that's really kind of control freakish. You know, and there is no one size fits all mantra, I don't think. There may be certain tones that will help most, but I still don't think it's a one size fits all kind of thing. So pick your own slogan, your own mantra that helps you get focused and help you state, change the state of mind that you're in. <sighs> but I don't believe it. Hmm. Pessimists say just saying three words won't help you with real problems. And to those people I say it will help. Drowning in your own misery, being paralyzed, never taking action, complaining, feeling bitter about life, never. We all know that life is too short to spend worrying about things that will never happen. And if something bad does happen to you, do something about it. So, there's also, he's got some other links on the side. I'm not real sure that the purpose of life is not happiness, it's usefulness. Some, uh, mm, no, because, you know, sometimes people are happy when they are useful. I don't know that usefulness is kind of, kind of, sort of, um, I don't know, Darius. I don't know. I don't know. Not sure if I'll go along. I'm thinking happiness wins more than Oh well. Oh well, oh well, oh well. So, uh, party bong hits. Yes, I was talking about the black one. Yes. Or she's supposedly African American. However, yeah. And no, I don't, I'm not real sure we're going to have another POTUS. You know, life would be wonderful if we didn't have another POTUS. My personal opinion, if we didn't have someone up there in an elevated area that's supposed to make all of those decisions for us because we're just, we just don't know, we just don't understand. Life is so complicated. Bullshit. Bullshit. You know, it's like this whole, I keep hearing all of these, or seeing things and hearing crap about, you know, Shrillery thinks she's above the law, and and Epstein thinks he's above the law, and this person thinks they're above the law, and that person. And you know what I got to say to all of those people? We're all above the law. You know, this is one of this is one of those weird, quirky things that that goes on in this in this reality where everything is upside down and topsy turvy and bass backwards. You know, they keep saying we're gonna break through that glass ceiling. What the dome? No, Shrillery, you're gonna break through the glass floor where you can see all of those other people that have stooped to a level that is no longer appropriate, that is not civil or civilized. You know, when, when the law is like a glass floor, you know, there, you really shouldn't have to see it unless it gets dirty. And I think our glass floor is pretty freaking dirty. And there's an awful lot of people that have broken through it. It's got a lot of cracks in it too. That law glass floor. And you know, maybe, just maybe, if we all realize that it's a floor and not a ceiling and we quit trying to break through it and see just how low we can go and realize that we can look down and we can learn from those other people's mistakes, you know, those that broke through that glass floor and are down there in the depths of depravity. That's why it's a depth of depravity. It's below. So yeah, consider that. 
just just you know something odd and unusual a pondering of grammy and anyway any case that too yeah y'all been listening to grammy's rocket chair here on real liberty media.com channel 10 and the rlm spreaker channel i will be back on wednesday or what today is wednesday <laughs> Oh my goodness, apparently I was out in the sun for a little bit too long. <laughs> I will be back on Friday for the Freaker Friday edition of the Rocket Chair. Let's see who else is coming up. Uh, tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, Flash Somebody is going to be on with 20% off after it's been marked up. 30 percent but it's okay it's a sale it's on sale look honey i got this on sale also on friday Vinny, are you still here are you going to do the ponder gander on friday at 1 p.m eastern time if not well okay i at least let everybody know check at 1 p.m eastern Vinny may be on with the ponder gander like i said i will be back the same batty time same batty channel for the rocket chair on friday and grim and moose will be on friday evening at 11 p.m eastern time with the freakers ball a good time had by all saturday at noon eastern time is the dork table with flash a rooney dork and whoever else he can finagle in as his co-hostage and mm, I, I don't know if i'll be around to play or not if i am i may play if not well i guess i won't be able to will i uh, Sunday at noon Eastern Time, we're going to have some Grimm on the radio playing some blues for y'all. And um, hopefully I'll be able to partake of some of that on Sunday. I'm hoping. I'm thinking harvest may be, you know, we're like three weeks late on harvest because of the weird ass weather out here. So wheat prices are going to go up, peep. They are, because I'm thinking there's an awful lot of grain that's going to start sprouting in the in the kernel which is gonna mean major dockage and all kind of other yeah <clears throat> the commodities market's gonna be interesting let's just put it at that so also while Grim is playing here on RLM there's going to be a rousing game of trivia going on in the RLM chat so come on over and play along directly after Grim at 3 p.m. Eastern Time is Hal Anthony who's going to open up a can of whoop ass on yo ass brain food deluxe Hal Anthony Sunday afternoon then Monday evening at 7 p.m. Eastern Time Grimm's coming on with some leftovers another healthy dose of brain food for you to consume and Tuesday morning for those of us in USA but eight, I think it's eight o'clock in the morning for Flash Rooney too I think it, it's still morning in Denmark we're going to have In a Perfect Wild with Flasher on RLM Radio. I think that's pretty much the schedule. So, y'all have an absolutely amazing rest of your woohoo or wackadoodle Wednesday. I'm thinking since it's nice enough out there and the wind's not blowing 90 to nothing, I may go out and play in the garden a little bit more before I do my blog. So, have an amazing rest of your evening. And I will catch you on the flip side. But before... I leave. Please remember, I truly do love you all. And I wish you all enough. Good night.